This is Grandmaster Daniel Naradisky. We're watching the world champion Magnus Carlsen taking on Iranian GM Parhamak Sudlu at the 2021 FIDE World Rapid and Blitz. We have a French defense, a pretty rare guest at the highest level, and a pretty risky opening to play against the world champion Magnus. Oh, let's see. He goes E5 and he goes for an advance. That's not the most common response to the French at the Grandmaster level, but we know that Magnus can play anything and he can play it well. Queen B6. Now, Black's idea in this opening is to put pressure on the D4 pawn. That's why Parham puts his queen on B6. And Black can also play a variation where the bishop comes to B5. I think that's what he's playing. He wants to go bishop D7 to B5, trade off that bad French bishop. And if Black can trade that bishop off and continue developing, then Black will solve his opening problems. Bishop D3 and there's bishop B5 by Parham. Now, this is coming at the cost of White's development, and Magnus actually takes on c5. Interesting decision there. And b4. This is clearly something that both of these players know. Black could have taken the pot on f2, but then the bishop would have gotten trapped. Bishop b3, queen a6, probably still theory. Now, it looks like a trade is inevitable, and Magnus does go for the trade. Now, Parham, he's undeveloped all of his pieces, so that's Black's biggest problem. Can Parham develop his kingside pieces especially quickly, or can Magnus develop an initiative as he goes a4, attacking the queen? This is a risky, risky line to play in a blitz game. Parham, he successfully traded off the French bishop, but now he's got some development issues that he has to take care of. And first, he has to decide where to put his queen. Queen d7 is possible. He can drop it back to a6 and keep preventing white from castling. Queen c4 is the ambitious move, but then the queen could become incredibly vulnerable to more attacking moves like knight a3 or knight d2. So I think Parham has to bring this queen back. This seems to be the first move where one of the players is out of theory, and it's Parham. And that's not, not a very reassuring sign. I like Magnus' position. I think the d4 square can also be used as an outpost for White's knight or White's bishop. This decision to take on c5, it's not very conventional in the advanced French, but it seems to be a very good one in this specific variation. Parham, okay, there's the answer. Queen down to c6, interesting. So now the knight can't come out to c6, but he probably wants to put the b8 knight onto d7. That's the square he wants to choose for the knight's development. Now, Magnus can castle, or he can continue attacking the queen. Magnus could go knight d4 in this position and centralize his knight, hit the queen once again, or he could reserve that move for a later point. Let's see what Magnus chooses. He's deep in thought, and looks like he's about to make a move, and he does decide to castle. Magnus in blitz, still very positional, still very calm, takes care of business before he goes for the attack. So he's already castled. White's already got almost everything developed. And finally, Parham starts to develop his kingside. But is it too late? Knight d4 by Magnus. Now the queen has to move again. Queen back to d7. Now the d4 knight could swing over to b5 and try to get to that very coveted d6 square. But Black's not going to allow that. Magnus goes pawn b5, restricting the knight on b8. And Parham continues to have trouble developing his pieces. Where is that knight on b8 going to go? And Parham might have to move his queen once again in order to make room for the b8 knight to come out to d7. And that's exactly what he does. He goes queen c7. But now Magnus could try to prepare the c3, c4 pawn push. Maybe knight d2, rook c1. And then very quickly, Magnus could try to push c4 and open up the center before black gets a chance to castle kingside. And that's the question. If Parham could rearrange his pieces, go knight g6, bishop b7, and castle, black is going to be more or less out of the woods. But if Magnus can open up the center before black gets a chance to castle, then things are going to look really grim. And knight d2, of course, you can't take that pawn on c3. That opens up the c file. And that is just deadly. Knight d7 by Parham. He continues to develop as quickly as he can. Now, will Magnus defend the e5 pawn? Or is he just going to throw that pawn to the wolves and instead try to open up the c file <clears throat> with c4? Let's see what Magnus does. He can go pawn f4 to de defend the e5 pawn. Or he can go rook c1 or maybe even immediately c4, trying to sacrifice pawns, as many pawns as it takes. And boom, c4 by Magnus. You can see what his mood is in this game. He is trying to explode this position. He doesn't care about pawns. And Parham can actually take either the e5 pawn or the c4 pawn he decides to take the c4 pawn now rook c1 looks really natural here if magnus can get a knight to c4 man this is looking really really dangerous this is not the kind of position you want to have against the world champion let alone in a blitz game with where time is so limited and you have to find precise defensive moves now parham could take knight takes e5 and simultaneously defend the c4 square but then magnus will have bishop f4 pinning that knight parham goes c3 he tries to buy himself as much time and keep the c file closed i think he wants to go knight e7 to d5 and continue defending that c pawn a very flimsy cover and if the c file opens it might be really bad. And b6, what a move by Magnus. Oh my goodness, he wants to go knight b5. What an incredible move. And you could see how surprised Parham was. 
b6, vacating the b5 square for the knight. And once he goes knight b5, as Magnus takes a sip of water, you can see how satisfied he is with his position. This is looking really bad for Parham because once he goes knight b5, not only is he going to be able to go knight d6, but he's going to be able to take the pawn on c3 and accomplish his main target of opening the c-file. All of his pieces are going to be ready to tear Black's king apart. And Parham hasn't even managed to get his bishop out of f8. He is nowhere near castling. Man, oh man, this is looking really bad for Black. And Parham, he continues to think. His time continues to dwindle. Now, he can take the pawn on b6. He probably has to. If he takes it with the queen, then he walks into a discovered attack by the bishop on e3. That's out of the question. If you take with a knight or with the pawn, then Magnus goes knight b5. Then he takes on c3. The knight will be threatening to jump to c7 and d6. There's so many squares for Black to keep track of. I don't see a move for Parham. I mean, he could move his queen back to c8. He decides to take on e5, and Magnus immediately jumps out to c4. Oh my goodness, now his other knight is in the game. And knight, knight b5, boom. Now you can't take the knight on c4 because of the fork on d6. And a queen trade does not help black, because look at how all of white's pieces will be in perfect attacking position. I think it's going to be checkmate even after the trade of queens. Parham has no choice but to go for it. Magnus... He could throw in knight c7 check, but I don't think he has to. He can play rook f takes d1, and look how nicely all of his pieces are positioned. But he takes his time. I think Magnus is considering whether to throw in that check on c7, because at the end of that variation, he's going to be attacking the rook on a8, and that might force Parham to spend another tempo to move that rook. And Magnus goes for a knight c7 check. Now he takes the queen to the rook. Looks like Parham has to move his rook on a. You can't afford to lose an entire rook here. But if he goes rook c8, then this other knight can jump into d6. And then there's going to be a fork on the other square. Knight e5 instead by Magnus. Even better, he threatens checkmate on d7. He threatens knight takes f7. He is tearing Maksudlu apart. Knight d5. And simply knight takes d5. He doesn't even need the rook on h8. He's going down the d file. Parham has to take on d5. Now rook takes d5. And I think the game is over. You're going to lose the knight on d7. And it's a mating attack. Let's see if Parham can find anything to stave off defeat here. Bishop, A3. You can see his time ticking down. Carlson wins the knight. His rook on C1 is hanging. Parham has that pass pawn on C3, but it's not going anywhere. Rook C7, what a move. Now, if there's a trade, then the pawn promotes BC. And Parham's losing the C3 pawn. He's got to go King E7, and the game is over. This is... Everything is lost, and what an incredible brilliancy by the world champion, Magnus Carlsen, crushing Parham Maksudlu at the World Rapid and Blitz. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to click on the link in the playlist for more of these videos. Thank you for watching.